but this mistake might actually be the biggest one that you could ever make and could inhibit your entire photography career. Out of all the segments in photography, portraiture is my bread and butter. It was the first love that I had when I picked up a camera back in 2010. And maybe that's you too. You could be starting out your portfolio, developing a new project like a photo book or a series that you want to put into a gallery. Beginning is always the hardest part, wherever you are in the process. I've noticed a few common problems when scrolling through online, on my Discord server, or even in real life when it comes to portrait photography. I mean, all of us are guilty of making some of these mistakes, including myself. Here are five common mistakes that begin beginners make when it comes to portrait photography and how to fix them. The number one problem that I've noticed is that the image is too crowded. It would be counterproductive to have your subject compete with the background, and the worst thing that you can do is probably crowd the headspace over here to the point that your viewer has to really look in close and try to visually pull away all the distractions to define like where the face ends and where the face starts. You basically don't want the viewer to ask what am I supposed to see here. So here's a couple ways to easily fix that. One, it's to really compose your image so that there's nothing too crazy going on in the background or the foreground that would take away the value of the subject. Another way that you could do that is shooting at a shallow depth of field like f2, f2.8 or even f1.4 if you can handle it on a manual focusing lens or an autofocus camera of course. A shallow depth of field will blur out all those things so that it won't compromise your subject but make sure you do it tastefully instead of like just blurring everything out for no reason. We'll, we'll get into that in another tip. But most of the times we're not photographing in an ideal area or against a paper backdrop so you can use your environment to help you frame up your subject. I have a link up here uh, talking about that very subject about natural framing or subframing where you use your environment to help you in your portrait photography. The second biggest mistake that I see a lot of people make is that the skin tone just looks completely whack and really off. If you're shooting on film, Portrait 400 is kind of like the gold standard for nailing that skin tone. Fuji Pro 400H is kind of a gamble sometimes. It really depends on what the skin tone looks like. And if it's too warm or too cold for you, just like add plus three or minus three to the temperature slider and usually that fixes it. And I know that there's a lot of artistic value in deviating from reality in a very tasteful fashion, but make sure that the skin tone just doesn't look like you're a blue reptile. This is usually a very easy issue to fix. Just make sure that your exposure looks great in camera. Obviously on film, you can't really check that. So make sure that what you're metering for the side that is being illuminated and the side that is in the shadow, make sure that it's illuminated well and exposed well, and the skin tone should be fine. The third common mistake that I see a lot of beginners make is that they're always shooting at the shallowest depth of field at the biggest aperture that they can afford because you bought that f1.4 lens for a reason or you got that gigantic medium format lens that can shoot at f2.4, f2.8 and you want to use it to its full potential. The prospect of having a super blurred out creamy background from your f1.4 lens seems nice at first but it actually kind of damages your portrait game in the long run. Portraits don't always have to be an isolated headshot. A lot of it can include the full body and a lot of powerful portraits in history have detailed that as such. Context is king. If you're shooting someone in a field, sure, like if you don't want that mountain in the background, then I guess you could blur it out. But if you're photographing someone who is in their room and the context of the room is powerful, you don't want to be shooting at a shallow depth of field where you can't even see the room in focus. So close up that aperture just a little bit and it even increases the sharpness of your photo and includes some features of the face that you may not have noticed had it been at f1.4. I didn't say that shooting wide open is bad, it's just be tasteful and be strategic with how you use your apertures. This fourth mistake is pretty underrated in my opinion because motion and blurriness, like we all know that that's like a bad way of like taking a photo. But one thing that I really want to like nail is that you need to focus on the eye when it comes to your portraiture. The eyes are the windows to the soul, yeah. But when you're looking at a photo of a person, psychologically speaking, we're establishing a connection with a photo of a person through the eyes first and then with the whole frame afterwards. If you, the photographer, are focusing on maybe like the chest or just the face in general and not the eye specifically, you're going to interrupt a mental and emotional connection with an image because the eyes aren't as sharp as it can be. Another technical thing to pay attention to is the shutter speed. Your shutter speed should always be as fast as possible without compromising the exposure of the image. One good rule is that your shutter speed should be one over twice the amount of your focal length. So I'm shooting on a 35 millimeter right now. 
my shutter speed at least should be one over 70 but there is no one over 70 so i should just go one above that just try your best to have your shutter speed be as fast as possible so it eliminates all like the shake that you have when you're holding your camera you don't want your image to be blurry but this mistake might actually be the biggest one that you could ever make and could inhibit your entire photography career and that is thinking that there's only one way to do portrait photography or photography in general at the end of the day this is an art form if you have a vision that includes a lot of motion and blurriness then go for it if your vision involves messing with the skin tones in an artistic and intentional way then go for it i think a lot of things that we've seen on youtube and also in the formal classroom is that the artistic way is supposed to follow this one main vein and that's very wrong following fundamentals and standard procedure is not a bad thing i feel like all of us have started there and then when you learn the principles you learn why you should break them or why you can break them i think that if you just break rules just to break rules it doesn't really do anything for you and your growth or maybe it does i don't know I want to see you be yourself in this creative space and want to see your creativity thrive in its most natural form. But if you're just starting out, if you're just a beginner, it's sometimes hard to have that reach its highest potential if you don't really know the fundamentals. You don't need it, but it's a great way to start. It's an option. There are tons of options out there. And that's all I have for you guys in this video. Make sure you subscribe for more film photography content or photography tips in general. Make sure you like this video and comment down below and I will see you all in that next video. Peace.